This is Dark Skies, a News Channel 8 spring weather special, brought to you exclusively by A-Best Roofing. You know, it's already been a very active season with numerous severe weather outbreaks, and we know there's going to be more. Watching this will make you and your family better prepared. I'll show you what to do during a tornado warning both in your home and on the road. And why we have storm chasers, their role when skies get dark and storms are brewing, and some of the amazing video that they've captured. And how much time you, on average, have to take cover. Plus, are we still in Tornado Alley, or has that shifted to the southeast? Let's begin in Norman. Meteorologist Colton Williams talks to the folks who issue the watches, alerting you that severe weather may be headed your way. Well, coming up in dark skies, we're going to talk about what to do when a tornado watch or warning is issued. But have you ever wondered who issues them and where are they issued from? Well, I'm at the National Weather Service in Norman to answer that question. These sights and sounds all too familiar to Oklahomans during severe weather season. Typically, the sirens sound just minutes after a tornado warning and hours after a tornado watch has been issued. This brings us to Norman, the home of two organizations responsible for watching weather around the clock, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, especially during severe weather. Rick Smith is the warning coordination meteorologist for the Norman Weather Forecast Office. He and his team coordinate with the Storm Prediction Center ahead of severe weather to issue severe weather watches. Um, those are issued by the National Weather Service as kind of a joint effort between the Storm Prediction Center and then the local National Weather Service office. Once the SPC issues a severe thunderstorm or tornado watch, it's important to be alert that severe weather is possible within the next four to six hours. But what about a warning? Uh, after the watch is issued, the, the local forecast office is responsible for kind of filling in the gap with, with more information. That's when one of our warning forecasters who's monitoring the storms using radar, using satellite data, using any piece of weather data that we can get our hands on, they make that decision whether we need to issue a severe thunderstorm warning or a tornado warning. Once Rick and his team issue a warning, it's being disseminated very, very quickly. And usually from the time we decide that we need to, need to issue a warning to the time it's scrolling on the bottom of your TV screen, it's less than a minute, sometimes 30 seconds. And then it's time to take action. When warnings are issued, the first to roll are our storm chasers. They play a critical role in giving us a first-hand view of what's happening. Meteorologist Bud Ford has more. You can count on News Channel 8 to keep you ahead of the storm. When the Storm Prediction Center puts us under a marginal or slight or moves it up to an enhanced or a moderate or a high risk, we have an entire team of professionals in the field. I want to introduce you to David Ballou. Now, David Ballou was out and caught an incredible piece of video. He is a first warning storm chaser for us. And tell me what was going on here. Uh, there was a very high amount of lightning during this storm. It was off in the distance and isolated and I positioned myself to allow it to just come come towards me just a little bit but uh, skirt off to the side and uh, you can just see uh, the uh, little tail section where the inflow coming into that updraft is reaching up very high probably in the 40,000 feet range uh, and then as it comes through you can then see how the uh, lights of the city are lighting up the base and you can see this tail section come in a second one actually and wow. uh, really lit up right in here. Yeah, this is an electric storm, probably with so much uh, uh, upward mobility inside the storm. You end up with big hail chunks, I would imagine. I'm certain, that. yes. Tell me what happened here. Uh, this was another event that uh, was uh, in uh, April uh, 14th of 2012. Uh, th th there was a, a pretty enhanced risk area. Uh, off to the far west, and we just kept driving west, kind of driving west, until finally it did produce a tornado. And uh, it was in a big field. There was uh, no damage that you could tell. But then as we're sitting there in our viewfinders, we realized that there was a second tornado on the ground. Wow, this is stunning video. So we have the beautiful greenery of the grass. The sun's trying to set and you end up with all of the colors Two tornadoes, which you didn't notice when you were originally in the field. That has to be crazy when everybody looks over. They're like, wow, everybody had to be thinking this is unbelievable. Yeah, and one thing that it was uh, kind of a note about this is that that there was not a lot of wind, but uh, no thunder, no rain, no hail. And should this have been a nighttime event, uh, could have been pretty intense because there was three tornadoes at one time 
uh, over the period of 21 minutes. Well, wow, that's unbelievable. Thank you for spending your time with me this morning. Now, the other thing we have, we have a full team. David Gady is another first warning storm chaser. You've been doing this how long now, David? Over 50 years. Over 50 years. On this team? On this team uh, with, with uh, Channel 8, 30 years. 30 years, and it's also 30 years marks what? The Catoosa tornado anniversary. Wow, and that's this year? Yes, that was uh, a, ba a real bad tornado where seven people were killed. That's yes. awful. Tell me about what happened in this video. Yes, we were sitting on Charles Page Boulevard. Uh, a tornado had just come through Sand Springs and I had positioned myself. And as you see, this video is where, where it was hitting the church. The pickup drives by and didn't realize, but the tornado was just crossing uh, Charles Page Boulevard, causing the transformers to explode. So I had to, uh, to, to run from the tornado at that point. Yeah, at that point, you have to make sure if you're not qualified, prepared, and you don't understand what's happening, you should not be out trying to get these videos. We have a team of professionals like David Gady, David Balloon. We have many more on that team. You can count on News Channel 8 when the weather gets bad and you find yourself under these types of risks and when the rain starts and when the tornadoes begin, you can count on News Channel 8. You keep it here. We'll keep you safe. Do you have a plan? Joy shows us what to do when the tornado warning is issued. The National Weather Service has off offered some sheltering guidelines to keep you safe. Now, of course, if you can avoid this, you want to stay away from manufactured homes, vehicles, or underneath an overpass. Now, those overpasses can act as a wind tunnel and can suction you right out. If you can stay away from gymnasiums, that'll help. But some of those better options, of course, interior room or well-constructed home or building, a basement if you have it, or, of course, some of those approved above or below low ground shelters. Here's a look at the Sand Springs tornado and with the damage that it did to some manufactured homes on March 25th, 2015. Notice this manufactured home is completely flipped over. These are not safe for severe weather. Now that's okay if you live in one, but you want to have a plan in place so you can seek shelter with enough time. Say you have a gas station that's down the street or a grocery store, or you have a friend that lives nearby. And well, a tornado watch has been issued for your area. Make sure to give yourself ample time so you can get over there by car or by foot so that way you can survive a severe weather event. Knowing your safe zone is key. Lowest level of your room or most interior room both work great. Stay away from windows or doors. Cover your head and of course do not get out of your safe space until you hear that all clear whether that warning has expired or the storm has moved out of your area. Basement if you have it. If not, an interior room will do just as good for you. You've just received an alert that you are under a tornado warning so you need to get to your safe space. In my home, Normally you would think a tub, right? But this tub is not safe. We have a window right next to it. So my safe space will be in my walk-in shower. It's right here. We have three sturdy walls. So that's going to keep us very safe. Make sure to have your gym shoes on. Worst case scenario, if you have to climb out of rubble, it's gonna keep you a lot safer than bare feet. So I'm gonna hug myself right up against the wall. If you have a helmet, baseball, softball, bicycle, it doesn't matter, make sure to put it on. It's going to keep you extra safe. I have my go bag right here, ID, non-perishable food items, any medications you need, you're going to need that. I have a quilt or comforter. This is just an extra layer of protection. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hunker down right here until I heard that the tornado warning has expired for my area. Say that you're driving, you hear over the radio, you're under a tornado warning. If you can look at your nearest intersection and find a gas station or grocery store, go to that. But I don't see one in front of me, so you need to head to a ditch right away. Immediately you want to get to a low-lying area. Now that you're at your low-lying area, you want to get down immediately. Make sure to cover your head and stay here until the storm has passed. When we come back, is Tornado Alley shifting east? Why you can't rely on outside storm sirens and the other storm dangers that can be just as deadly. Welcome back to Dark Skies, our spring weather special. We've all seen and more importantly heard these outside sirens. They can be extremely helpful, but don't count on them. Here's Chief Meteorologist Dan Threlkel with more. We've all heard them, and if you're outside, you know how loud they can be. But the problem is, during storms, most of the time we are inside. And with the TV going and the thunderstorms going, Sometimes with modern insulated houses and double pane glass, you don't hear the storm siren. 
unless you live next door. There are more than 80 sirens in the Tulsa area alone, and they can be heard up to a mile away, depending on the weather. Now, these sirens are used to warn not only of tornadoes, but also of military attacks, flooding, and even chemical releases. The goal is to drive people inside so they can turn on the TV, radio, or log into the computer and find out what's going on. Each city or community has its own criteria as to when to activate the outside sirens. Some areas will wait until the potential of a tornado is very near that area. Others will sound the alarm when their city is in the eventual path of a tornado. Outside storm sirens are just one layer of protection. You need several ways to get information about when to take cover. We've been told for years to get underground in a shelter where there is a tornado, but now there is an option for above ground shelters. Are they just as safe? Here's Chief Meteorologist Dan Threlkeld with more. For many years, unless you had a basement, an underground storm shelter was your only option. But with people with physical limitations, this could be a challenge. Now, there are other ways to stay safe during a tornado. Above ground shelters must be tested before they can be sold. Here at the Texas Tech University National Wind Institute, they abuse storm shelters. They simulate flying debris by using a cannon to fire two by fours to see if a shelter will hold up against an EF5 tornado. This above ground shelter survived an EF5 tornado that hit Moore on May the 20th, 2013, while the rest of the house was destroyed. Another interesting fact about above ground shelters is that they can reduce the risk of flooding during a heavy thunderstorm. Still, some prefer the security of being below ground, and that's fine. But others like the convenience of walking into your garage and taking shelter inside a tested above ground storm shelter. The reality, both are safe. With recent outbreaks in the southeast, some are wondering if Tornado Alley is shifting away from us. Here's Colton with some thoughts. Well, after what has already been a very active year in terms of tornadoes here in Oklahoma, we've actually set the all-time records for January and February, or the all-time record in terms of tornadoes, five in January, 12 in February, and those come in months where we usually average one or less tornadoes on the year, okay? So as we continue to fill in here, we headed to April and May where we'll average 10 to 12 to 20 to 25 tornadoes in a month. Those months are still yet to come. Then you go back the last decade, you crunch the numbers, you see Oklahoma still very much active in terms of tornadoes, right? We've had a good mix of above average and below average years the last few years. Near average to just above average, 2020 was slightly below. You go back to 2019, the all-time record for tornadoes in Oklahoma, 149 in one year and again you don't have to go back very far and you see that now the traditional idea where is tornado alley well that includes the southern plains here parts of oklahoma texas kansas nebraska some iowa missouri well then you've probably also heard the term thrown around dixie alley mississippi and alabama the state line there that's been an area where the tornado activity has increased a tad in the last several years and folks have started to wonder is tornado alley really shifting to the southeast well if you crunch the numbers you go all the way back to 1980 to 2000 that 20 year period how many tornadoes occurred per year on average oklahoma about 58 kansas about 60 texas the big winner there at 169 but you go off to the southeast mid 30s from 20s out in tennessee but then you look at the last 20 years and you start to see Dixie Alley has really ramped up in terms of activity. That has become a hotbed of activity, while most of the Southern Plains have stayed pretty similar or some slight increases, like in the case of Kansas. But what's important to know is that if you go back to 1950, every red line on this map is a confirmed tornado. And if you notice, they happen in all 50 states. So regardless of where Tornado Alley is, it's important to stay vigilant and understand your severe weather safety precautions. Out on the weather deck, we can see what's happening currently with our weather. But if we want to look out into the future, we have to look at weather models.
And we have plenty of models to look at. Some are long term, some are short term, some are convective allowing. This is the NAM model here and we're looking at the highest level in the atmosphere. You could see with the jet stream a upper level trough and with the jet you can actually determine whether you have rising motion or sinking motion at the surface. So that's a neat tool. We're looking at reflectivity here on the NAM nest. You can see some of those stronger storms, maybe a line of storms that could form near Texas. For green country, we're looking at maybe a cluster of storms, but this gives us an idea of where we could see rain or the potential for storms. Now there are a lot of storm or severe products and we can get those on convective allowing models. This is the her where we're looking at helicity. This looks at the spin that can be ingested into the updraft and where we could potentially see supercells. So right now it looks like potentially that could occur in Texas. This is just one of many products we look at. Moisture of course is important. We're looking at dew point. This is the moisture that could be ingested potentially into a storm or as well as the moisture for cloud cover. So that tells is how much rain we could potentially get and all important things. The GFS, we can look at temperatures all the way through 380 hours. This is one of our long term models. Temperatures around maybe the mid 60s or so. Now models are great, but of course we have to look at local weather patterns and that's how we devise a forecast. Coming up, tornadoes are not the only danger we face when dark skies continues. Tornadoes are not the only danger. In fact, there are other natural hazards. Dan has more. Lightning is an electrical current. A bolt of lightning can reach 54,000 degrees Fahrenheit. That's about five times hotter than the surface of the sun. It can travel over 25,000 times faster than a bullet. As dangerous it is, it can also be mesmerizing. Here in the U.S. alone, lightning strikes about 20 million times per year. It can also be very destructive, triggering home fires, wildfires, and it can kill. Annually, lightning kills an average of about 50 people per year in the United States. Interestingly, men are more than four times more likely to be struck by lightning than women. Overall, men are outside more, and some, not all, We'll wait until that golf game is over, or the fishing slows down, or other decisions that keep them from going inside during a storm. Lightning is formed within a cloud. Above the freezing layer, small bits of ice form and bump into each other. Eventually, the entire cloud fills up with an electrical charge. The positive charges form at the top of the cloud, while the negative charges form at the bottom and since opposite attract, so a positive charge to build up on the ground tends to happen just beneath the cloud. Now, normally air acts as an insulator, but when the difference between the negative charge at the base of the cloud and that positive charge on the ground becomes too great, lightning is a result. And thunder is a result of the rapid heating and expansion of the air caused by a lightning strike. When lightning happens, the rapid expansion of the air produces an atmospheric shock wave that we hear as thunder. Now, here are some tips to reduce your risk of being struck by lightning. Never seek shelter under a tree or other tall object. Don't be the tallest object. Avoid hills, mountains, or even an open area where you yourself are the tall object. Remember, when thunder roars, Go indoors. If you hear thunder, you're close enough to be struck by lightning. Remember, lightning can travel. Lightning can strike 10 miles or even more away from a storm that looks to be so far in the distance. Remember, 90% of those struck by lightning survive, but some have serious injuries and most are not killed. Your best bet is to go inside during a lightning storm. If you can't take shelter inside, get in a vehicle. If you can't get in a vehicle and you're caught outside, cover your head, crouch down, and become a very small target. Here is some good news. The time between a warning and a tornado is getting longer, giving you more time to take cover. Meteorologist Colton Williams has the specifics. In 1948, the first ever tornado forecast was issued right here in Oklahoma. Captain Robert Miller, stationed at Tinker Air Force Base in Oklahoma City, was a meteorologist for the Air Corps. He successfully warned for a tornado that would later strike the base, 
leaving behind F3 damage. While Miller's forecast was timely, tornado warning lead time averaged about five minutes in 1985. According to a study conducted by the National Weather Service in 2005, warning lead time had improved significantly to around 12 minutes. Rick Smith, the warning coordination meteorologist with the Norman National Weather Service, says lead times have improved slightly since then. For tornado warnings, uh, on average, we get the warning out about 13 minutes before the tornado has even developed. Uh, that's going to vary, you know, and, and that has gone up. You know, it used to be in the single digits not that terribly long ago. Even though 13 minutes is a small improvement and may seem like a long time, it's still important to stay vigilant during severe weather and to have your plan in place well ahead of time. It might just save your life. News Channel 8 offers multiple ways for you to receive life-saving weather information. Joy breaks down the tools that you have at your disposal. The first warning storm team's mission is to keep you at home safe. Now there are plenty of ways to do that. And one of those ways, of course, is on air. We have a lot of shows that you can check out. That first one being Good Morning Oklahoma from, from 4.30 to 7 a.m. We have Good Day Tulsa at 9 a.m., our midday show at 11 a.m., and our evening shows 4, 5, 6, and 10 p.m. On those shows, you can catch our radar, latest future casts, and everything you need to prep for the week ahead. You can also head over to KTUL.com. This is what the home page looks like. We have our weather tab, top left part of your screen. Click that. It'll take you to this page where you get current information on the left, seven-day forecast for you. And if you scroll down, there's an interactive radar you can use. Check out the latest weather cast, and there's a written forecast that takes care of today, tonight, and the next couple of days ahead. You can also download our weather app. All you do is search KTUL WX on the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. And here's what it looks like on my phone. I have the KTUL weather app on the bottom right, so we'll click that. It'll launch the app and you'll get this screen right here. Once this screen loads, then you have the information at your fingertips. Current temperatures, if you scroll down, you have your hourly forecast. You can also click hourly at the bottom portion of your screen where you have the hourly forecast. Just another way to look at it. You have the daily forecast, just like our 10 day and interactive radar. You can pinch to zoom in or zoom out. You can also hit play and this will loop for you. Now, what do we always say? Keep it on News Channel 8 will keep you safe. If you've ever spent any time with a farmer, then you know that they often use the livestock that they have to tell them what's going on with the weather. Cows do certain things when rain's coming, chickens do other things, goats do some things, even horses will do some things to let you know if strong to severe weather's coming. Now, you may not have a house full of horses, goats, or chickens, you might, but if you don't, you may have a house full of these lovely four legged friends. These will often tell you when rain's coming. Obviously, if there's thunder and lightning, they may go a little crazy running all over the house. If that is the case at your home, your vet has some things that they can take that will calm them down just a little bit. Sunny Lee has one that uh, she uses from her vet. But with that, it's something to remember. If you and your family are practicing where you should go in the event of severe weather, your dogs can sense that. They know what's going on. Something's a little different. So when you're doing that, spend some time with your pups. Make sure that they are part of the process because they pick up the energy around you. That way, when severe weather's coming and you have the family going to your safe place, you have the kids, you have the wife, and you got your go bags and all those things, the dogs will know what to do. That way, when you're in the process of protecting you and your family, your furry friends not looking at you like this. Coming up, some final thoughts on the storm season this year and how you can be better prepared. Time to test your weather knowledge. Can we get tornadoes all year round? Well, the answer is yes. We have had tornadoes in each of our months. And did you know we had six tornadoes reported in the cold month of February? That happened in 1975, then again in 2009. Second question, what's the highest number of tornadoes ever reported in one year in Oklahoma? 149 tornadoes. That happened in 2019. Here's our third trivia question. What's the fewest number of tornadoes reported in one year in Oklahoma? 16. That happened back in 2014. Here's our next weather question. What's the highest winds ever recorded on the planet? 
well, it was during a tornado, 301 mile per hour winds on that big tornado outbreak day of May 3rd, 1999. I was working that storm. The Doppler on wheels just above the surface recorded winds at 318 miles per hour. Here's the next weather trivia question. Look at the size of that hailstone. Wow. What's the largest hailstone ever found? Well, this one happened in Vivian, South Dakota, not in Oklahoma or Texas. It was nearly eight inches in diameter, a little bit smaller than a bowling ball, 18.6 inches in circumference. That's around it. And it fell in Vivian, South Dakota, July 23rd in 2010. And finally, what's the largest tornado ever recorded? That was that big, massive El Reno tornado, 2.6 miles wide. That happened on May the 31st, 2013. How'd you do? Our commitment is to keep you and your family safe. Our team has recently been awarded most accurate five consecutive years in Tulsa. We are constantly monitoring the weather day, night, weekends, and even when you and your family are likely asleep, I'm here in the morning. We have you covered. Make sure to download our News Channel 8 app so you will know if a warning has been issued. It's free and you'll also be able to check radar to see how close the rain is. This is a commitment we have. Watching News Channel 8 is a choice. We'll give you the latest watches and warnings, but also tell you what we think. Is this a violent storm or just a rain or we won't try to scare you? Keep it right here on News Channel 8. We'll keep you safe. Thanks for watching. This has been Dark Skies, brought to you by A-Best Roofing.